possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Hello, everybody, and welcome along to our latest episode of the RTE GAA podcast. Myself and Rory are delighted to be joined by Shane McGrath and Barry Kelly. We're going to chat through a lot of the weekend's hurling, maybe some of the big decisions, and I guess where we stand now, knowing that we're facing into a repeat of last year's All Ireland final between Limerick and Kilkenny. And look, Shane, let's start with the Limerick Galway game first, right? Because it seems to me the All Ireland champions I was saying to the lads even last night, it feels like this is the first time maybe we've seen the, the real Limerick. So how much did they impress you? Um yeah, sure. I, I don't know, Jackie. Like I mean they're they're they're, they're just some team. I just um I think that the players that they have, I think we're forgetting that it's this is done now without Sean Finn and Declan Hannon, like who could be who would be like their monumental losses, like um, but they just seem to Carry on. I, I do feel that there's probably a group of maybe 18 players, 19 players max that John Kiley has and that he really, there he's tried and trusted like, and that they, that these guys get on the pitch and they, they shuffle around in and like time and time and time again, Jackie, they're getting the job done. I think it was their best performance of the year. Um, and is who, what's that down to? I suppose they're just they're just at home playing in Crow Park, aren't they? They're just they're so used to playing there. They're so comfortable playing there. They're comfortable with the environment there. They're they're big players, seem to relish that environment, and they seem they seem at home there. Really, is what I'm trying to say. And what could you put it down to? One moment you couldn't like. I mean, I know. Well, like say if we look at it right at, at minute thirteen, Jackie in the game, right? It's a draw for the third time in the game, and it's it's one three to six points. And then we fast forward into minute 25 and it's 112 to 16 to Galway, right? And then after that, then from minute 25 on, everyone knows now that like Limerick outscored Galway 118 to six points. So the, the game management thing with Nicky Quay came in, and I'm sure Barry might discuss it as, as a ref. How do you deal with it? It's very, very difficult. Like, but I, I don't think you could put it down to that. But what I what I really liked watching, and maybe not everybody noticed that this was was. Around that time when there's a bit of mayhem going on, the camera cuts to the sideline and you can see Paul Kinnork with a little piece of paper, like I would rip out of a copy maybe to, to get someone's signature or something like that. And he just has this little piece of paper and he's jotting down a few things. He's not even watching the game. There's a break in play. And then the whole the whole dynamic of Limerick's setup changes. And I think that's down to the genius that Paul Kinnork is, first of all, to just see these things in game mode. From a sideline view, whether they have someone up up higher or not looking down, because you know where we are, lads, and the media day, like the, the view is unbelievable. I don't know how more management teams are taking up a vantage point up there, maybe sometimes. But to be able to see from sideline view, make the changes. I don't think it's down totally to Nicky Quaid um stopping the game with, with the game management team. I think it's down to the fact, you know, Galway still had two, three chances after that, immediately after that. They didn't take them, but it just it shut them down completely. Um, like their their puck outs, they they went long thirty times. Then Galway, right? They only won fifteen of them. Limerick went long nineteen times. They won fourteen of them. So it's just the way they were set up, Jackie. I thought it was most impressive. Like, I mean, we could talk about we could talk about um, you know, stoppages, and we talk about this, that, and the other. It, it, what it does come down to really is the players on the field, and you just have to admire them. The way they stood up the other day, um, six points down, there was no panic. Go on to totally dominate the game, even in the final quarter of the game, guys. You know where. Where Galway got off 15 shots, I think, against Tip in the final quarter. He only got off three shots the other day against Limerick. And flip that around. Limerick got off 12 shots, got seven scores. I just think they're an awesome team. I think that they're doing it time and time again, regardless of the opposition, regardless of the game. And, um, you know, to, they're, there they are again. There's no reliance on one person either, Jackie. Like, um, 13 different scorers. Whereas Galway had six different scores. So look, they're, they, that's what they are. They're an awesome group and they give their best group performance of the day on Saturday, of the year yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. And I do think, Barry, we're in an era it's even harder for them to win. Like that's, I think, you know, Shane has yeah. touched on that before as well. Like when you look at what they've had to come through in Munster, what they've had to do it, like this, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe the conversation about them being the greatest depends on what happens this year and beyond. But I, I still think they're right up there because of what they're doing right now. Absolutely, Jackie. And 
I don't know who it was in the weekend, some of the papers, but someone had a very good article about, and Shane alluded to it there, is that uh, so many of the players have played nearly all of the games. I think Nicky has played, I think John Kai's been in charge of 38 championship games. I think Nicky has played 37 of those, maybe 38 even. Um, like the, There's 13 players who have played 31 matches or more. So like they are relying on a core of 12 or 13 guys. You know, obviously Casey's have had crucial ligament injuries and so on. Um, but they have got good strength and depth now, but you still know that they're going to have the same 13 or 14 guys. And if Sean Finn and, and Declan Hannon were available on in two weeks' time, then they'd both be playing and maybe David Reedy might lose out, a bit unlucky and so on. That won't happen now, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree in terms of, like, they've won five monsters in a row. Um, like, they have come through a very, very, you know, competitive month championship every single year. Um, and they've won an awful lot of tight games. Like, last Saturday was the first game they've won by kind of nearly double-digit scores in nearly a, in a long, long time. They've been winning two- and three-point games um, for a long time. And, yeah, I, I agree with Shane. I, I just think, like, 118 to six points from the 27 minutes up to the whatever, over, over the next 50 minutes. Like, this was against Galway. This wasn't... This is a genuine team. Okay, you might say that Galway maybe flatlined a bit in the second half, obviously. But this is not, you know, I'm a team coming from McDonough Cup... This is like Galway being the second or third best team in the country for the last four or five years. And yet they were wiped out in the last 50 minutes. 118 to six points is, you know, by any by any standards, a, a serious, um, a serious annihilation, really. Uh, mm. And in relation to the final, Jackie, I just think that, you know, Owen Cody was sublime yesterday. We'll talk about him shortly. And he's just an incredible hurler. Uh, and obviously he'll be targeted in terms of shut down Owen Cody and, you know, TJ was men's too, but, you know, will TJ get that many scores from play? You'd wonder, brilliant from line balls and frees and 65 yesterday. Uh, I don't think Limerick are quite as reliant. I know Aaron got whatever, two, seven or thereabouts, but Limerick have so many more guys. Shane mentioned there, many scorers they had and so on. Tom Morris, he picks up two or three points every game. Gary's got two or three points. Um, and we get on to talking about Shane and talking more about him because of his position, but Dara Donovan has just you know probably unrecognizable in terms of not a very high profile player but so consistent and I know he's gotten he's getting applauded this weekend because he was so good but Daryl Donovan could probably walk into most dressing rooms across the country and, and, and guys wouldn't know him like he's just one of these unsung heroes every team needs him you know Shane's team had the likes that maybe you know Declan Fanning and guys were always eight and a half out of ten every single game and uh but Daryl Donovan was just, you know, and he's not one of their stars as such. You know, he's not as recognised as Kyle and Aaron and Cian and Garage, but yet he's never, ever, rarely beaten in, in a contestant. And when without William alongside him on, on Saturday, he kind of really took the game with a scruff of the neck. Just remarkable. So they are, they are like, you know, we we'll talk about their place and the overall standing, but like they're right up there now. They really are. They have to be Rory because of yeah. it's the consistency and you know all of the things that go with them. But like, let's not forget, John Kiley has been there for seven years. This is their fifth All Ireland final under him. Like that is ridiculous in any manager's going. If you'd have told John Kiley when he was starting out as Limerick manager that this is where he'd be seven years later, I, I don't even know if he would have believed they've had, had they would have had this much success. And I think it's probably um, it's probably embellished all the more that all the other teams I think have improved over the last twelve yeah. to eighteen months. Uh, particularly in Munster. Uh, I think I heard Shane on the radio uh, yesterday uh, say that this would be the greatest All-Ireland that, they that they'll have won out of all of them. And I couldn't agree more because effectively what they're going to have to do is take on everything that Munster has, including Clare twice, absorb a defeat as well, which was the first time in ho however many years, and then beat Kilkenny and Galway. And, and and which is basically the best of Leinster. I mean, this is an extraordinary run of games. It sets up for an incredible final. Um, the uh, the only I mean, I think it's been an outstanding hurling championship right across the board. And I think sometimes that maybe get gets forgotten in that like the most hurling championship. Fair enough. But Leinster was really good as well. Um, I think the only issue for me was that you were expecting the maybe on Saturday the game to be slightly more competitive. But oh, look, we got an absolute belter again on uh, on Sunday. 
And I think it sets up for an incredible final because I would 100% also agree with Don Logue in terms of what he said to you last night. I do think Kilkenny are better set this year yeah. to have a cut off Limerick than they were last year. Mm, yeah, well, look, that I guess that's the big question, isn't it? Um, and we'll touch on that game in a minute. But before we go away from this game, Shane, I am... I guess the questions that you've all raised about Galway, like Rory said, we were all hoping it was going to be more competitive. I think we were all expecting it was going to be more competitive as well. And like the lads touched on this a little bit last night when they were talking about Galway's setup, how the first 30 minutes, everything went well. I still wonder, could he have stuck with it or is it just they, they didn't have the legs? I don't know. But like to me, Galway, like they're just so disappointed in the second half. And it's another year where Henry's got to be scratching his head saying, how are we going to get any closer to this gang? Yeah, no, I... Could have got closer. I don't know. I think their hand was forced, Jackie. It wasn't what that day changed. It was the limit to change as Limerick made kind of forced them in. You know, I mean, Aina Murphy was pinging ball. He was finding Keenan Fahey in space. He was finding Cahill Mannion in space. But Limerick just changed their structure. Like if you look where Shamie Flanagan ended up for the majority of Galway's puckouts from that kind of minute 25, minute 26 on, like he's nearly back around mid third midfielder around the half back line. What's that allowing to do? It's allowing Limerick to kind of set up with maybe eight, nine, ten bodies at the back. So they knew that, you know, if Galway went short, they were probably going to maybe, it was coming long then from this would be quick one, two with Aina Murphy in the full back. And they had so many bodies back there, then they just, they crowded them out. What could Galway try to do to counteract that? They, they could have maybe worked it through the lines, e.g. the point that Tom Monaghan got in the second half where he scored from distance. But they they, they didn't do it. Maybe they, they weren't confident to do it. Um, maybe when they were trying to do it they were just getting shut down so much by you know just the intensity that Limerick were bringing when they did go short but they didn't seem to have another plan then and like and Henry was saying he was very in, he was very honest in the interview like he said they were just trying to put out fires everywhere like. and by that he meant when they went long their, their Kyle Hayes was dominating with one who was getting on breaks they had bodies back there like to, to, to win those things if they went short they would go short maybe once the next thing Limerick would swarm and they'd all push up on them and, and they were getting turned over in that regard. So I, I I just think they didn't have a plan B or they just weren't comfortable with a different plan, Jackie, to be honest. And that, that was because of Limerick changed their structure. It wasn't Galway that changed. It was Limerick changed their structure. And again, we can change structures and we can have all these things written down on paper. But if the players aren't, if you don't have the quality players to, to carry out these things, Jackie, what do you do? And quickly, Jackie, on it, like, I mean... We talk about Galway making progress. Everyone was very disappointed. I think the Galway people were dis most disappointed, Jackie, with how they went down. It wasn't that they lost, like it was how they went down. And I and I understand that because, like, from a tip point of view, it it wasn't that we lost the Galway in the quarter final. It was how we went down. Like we just we just went down without a real fight. And that's the way Galway were in the semi final on Saturday. And like in twenty twenty two, Jackie, sixty six minutes gone in the game, it's a draw, right? In twenty twenty three, sixty six minutes gone in the game, Limerick are up by seven and cruising. And like mm -hmm. we were talking about our goal, we have goal, we made progress in a year. For me, with those two things there, I don't think they have. Um, I, I know that might be hard to say, but I, I don't think they have as a group. I think they were nearly in a better place this time last year, Jackie, playing Galway, Glimmerick in a semi-final, gave a better performance and were closer. And this year, it was just, like, let's be honest, it was capitulation from, from minute 27 on. And that, that's very evident from the score, the way they were outscored in the game, like. Mm. One, one thing, Jackie, you just once said, just I, 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 one thing that struck strikes me about trying to take Limerick down, and I was when I was watching the match, and it, it feels it felt to me I was kind of trying to work out an analogy in my head, and it's like it's like you it's like defusing a bomb, right? It, you your game plan nearly. You now I don't know much about defusing bombs, but I've seen Lethal Weapon loads of times, right? <laughs> so like the the. It nearly needs to be the perfect game plan. Perfect. And even if so much as the smallest thing goes wrong, the whole thing just blows up in your face. And I felt that that goal chance that they had early doors where Mike, uh, was it Mike Casey, basically, I don't know whether he knew he was if he knew get, it was unbelievable. Yeah, you know, it might have been the case that like, he was just making himself big and the ball basically hit off the hurley as opposed to him making the save across. 
But and then I think Limerick went straight down the other end. I think they're six up at that stage. That would have made it nine. Limerick goes straight down the other end, and then all of a sudden, what potentially is a nine point game becomes a five point game. And I actually thought you could see, you could literally physically see the belief and the confidence almost seep out of them at that stage. And that's what I'm saying is like, it just needs to be so perfect if you're going to want, you, everything needs to go right if you're going to beat them. Mm. Or it needs to be so brave, Rory. Brave, that's what yeah, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. it needs to be, if, if, yeah. if the template is there, it's probably clear. And we'll talk about them in a minute. They totally went away from it in the first half yesterday. I couldn't yeah. believe it. Yeah. But they were, they're, they're so brave when they play them. They go man on man. And I just think Galway didn't really did, did they didn't really do that then, you know. They, they did it for they tried to do it for a while, but I just think there needs to be a brave and if there's a crowd that's going to be brave. Oh, they're, they're coming. They're, they're coming. They're, they're, yeah. they're coming. They're yeah. <laughs> coming. Yeah. Jack, Jackie as well. My analogy, my analogy is more sporting rather than uh, Mel Gibson based. But anyway, <laughs> um, um, I, I just in, in a way, it's a bit like you know, it's a bit like a boxer. You know, it's it's the George Foreman and and Ali back whatever nearly fifty years ago. This stage I suppose or forty five years ago, whatever it was. Uh, you know, they just go away, punch themselves out in the first. I think 27, 28 minutes were yeah. six up. And then suddenly, yeah. within three or four minutes, it's back to a point. And, and Rory mentioned there about psychologically, you know, the team suddenly, we're after doing a lot of hurling here and we're only a point up. Yeah. Like, and, and it's, it's like this thing, the boxer, you, you know, you throw enough punches and you're hoping you'll finish your opponent off. And when your opponent is still standing and actually coming back stronger and you're suddenly wilting, it's like, what more do we have? The other thing too is, I think people forget too, is that, you know, a lot of those Galway guys have a, a good bit of mileage in the clock. I've played a lot, a lot of hurling. And, and they've lost, like, you know, can't ignore the fact that, you know, Joe and David Burke, you know, a true injury and, I suppose, retirement, uh, a colossal loss. Like, Joe and David Burke would be two of the all-time greats of, of Galway hurling. Uh, a lot of those guys played in the Allerland final in 2012. They went to a replay. They played in 15... Uh, 17, 18, semi-finals, 15, 16, 17 against Tip. Um, you know, the core of that team, the eight or nine guys in that team are still there. Um, and they just haven't had the, the replacements of the same quality and the same physicality as well. I mean, obviously, you know, it's two teams lined up side by side. You know, Galway have three or four guys who just haven't physically got to the same level as the Limerick lads. Like Limerick have... I mean, I think it was David Reedy, I think I saw after the game. And David Reedy is almost the slightest guy that Limerick have. The rest of them seem to be absolute, mm. you know, monsters. And uh, monsters who obviously can play an incredible level of hurling as well. And, mm. you know, uh, people can be critical of Galway, but, you know, the, the Galway team over the, over the last 10, 12 years has given an awful lot of good days out. And you know, maybe haven't got enough of Ireland to show for their, their efforts in a way, you know, one all Ireland and probably been in, Eight or nine semi-finals and four or five finals, but um, I wouldn't be as harsh on them. I just, I just don't think they have the quality. I really don't. And Barry, Barry, the thing around the um, Nicky Quaid and taking the helmet off. I mean, I don't know what James Owens is ex actually expected to do. He had a brilliant game, by the way. But yeah. I'm not sure, like, what's your what's your take on that? Yeah, I discussed this or even at club level, and it's you know Shane will know this from being in a, a temporary dressing room in terms of tactics and plans and so on. Like, it's not even as if there's a signal coming from John or Paul or whoever, you know, Sean O'Donnell up in the up in the, up in in the the box doing stats. It's not. It's Nicky knows himself, right? They're after, they're after getting four in the bounce or after getting five in the bounce. But from a referee's point of view, the problem is that the day you go in and you tell the guy to puck it out, get on with it. And afterwards, or even a few minutes later, he genuinely has a concussion injury. Like you are, as a referee, you are You're going to get in big, big trouble. Like, I'm... I would, again, I know we're making rule change the whole time, but it wouldn't be hard to make a rule change like the blood, blood sub rule in a way. If a guy goes down with a head injury, you're gone yeah, automatically for 10 off. minutes. You have to go but off Barry, for 10 that's, minutes. Barry, that's the, that's the only thing that's yeah. going to stop it. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah. Nick, you have to go off for 10 minutes. Like, players hate going off, even on black cards. I see it, like, at local level. I see it at, I see referee at the club level. Players want to play. It, like, it's very simple. Players love playing the game. They're not even taken off even near the end of the game. They want to play it to the very, very end. And if Nicky was genuinely had a problem with his contact lens or head or whatever it was, if you were going off for 10 minutes, and particularly goalkeeper, 
like it's become, and we might discuss this even like, because I mean, in the last 15, 20 years, it has just been the position in both football and hurling that's been transformed beyond like the standard of goalkeeping. You'd never see them making a mistake these days. Like they don't make. And if, if they do, they get absolutely pummeled yeah, because like, they're the last man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I remember Fitzy let in one in 95, Michael Dyden took a shot and it off the hurley and went in. But when was the last time in a big, big game that a keeper made kind of a howler like that? In fact, it's the well, opposite. I think, I think, I think, I think to Clare goalie the first day out against Tipperary, and we didn't see him. We didn't see him yeah, again. Yeah, and, he and he's making his he's making his debut. And, yeah, yeah, you know, like, but generally speaking, like going back to it, it was mentioned last night, Fitzhenry and Brendan Cummins and Don Logue and Fitzy himself, and you know, going back like uh, McGarry and uh, and I get, and I do think I, I think I think we're lucky enough on Sunday week. I think you're talking about arguably the two, two great the two the two the two, the two best of all time and not far off. I think Murphy is I think Murphy's mind boggling as a keeper. As a player, like he can play outfield anyway, you know that like, but uh, I think he's just an incredible keeper. Yeah, he's amazing. And Nick and, and Nicky Quaid is is right there with him. Like I mean Nicky Quaid's Nicky Quaid's value to that Limerick team in terms of puck outs and game plan and you know experience and it, it's it's incredible. Like I mean Shane might she knows these guys, I'm sure. Like, but I think I think Owen Murphy as a shot stopper, there, there's no no one ever been better. Yeah, he was amazing. Come here before we move away from rule changes and all that, and onto the other game. I I do I am interested in your take on not just that the the time wasting or whatever you want to call it gamesmanship. I I do think for a modern day intercounty referee these days. I, like, I do wonder if they're being helped enough, Barry, because one thing that strikes me is, you know, with, you know, every time there's a board put up for the injury time, people are saying, oh, God, it should be more time. If it's Hawkeye, they're saying, oh, there should be more time. Can they be helped? Can they help? Can they be helped a little bit more? And it does seem to me now, particularly to be an intercounty hurling referee, whatever about the standard of players right now for intercounty referees, I, I don't know if there's been a harder time to referee the game. No, no, absolutely not. I, I've discussed this with lots of people in the past, um, you know, in conversation, just anecdotally as well. Like in terms of, if they look back, the game, the games I refereed, I finished in about twenty, I did a semi final in twenty seventeen, so I finished in twenty eighteen. Like it's unrecognizable, and the game I refereed uh, was a lot more straightforward. I mean, the, the game the chain played, in the sense that, you know, a lot of Shane's efforts at midfield that was one-on-one -on -one combat with the likes of, you know, Michael Fenley or Char or whoever it was for Kilkenny or, you know, for Galway, whoever it was. Uh, like, that doesn't happen nowadays. Now it's like just a battlefield out in that middle, you know, that middle third. We talk about it. The, the, the words we use are like in war zones almost, you know. I know, I know we exaggerate things, but it is incredibly physical. Um, and like, and the, and the skill levels then at the players are just off the charts, like saw a, a flick yesterday, but Shane O'Donnell flicked it, flicked it out to Tony Kelly, like and it was just like, and, and there was another flick, but Adrian Mullen flicked the ball on as well for a score, by, I think by Owen Cody. It was just, you know, you might try and do it in the garden, and you'd be like, but no pressure, like, and it's just the skill levels are, are off the charts, but the physicality, uh, players' fitness, so there's so much, you know. Barry Nash comes forward. Barry Nash is a number four, just a number only. He can play anywhere, comfortable on the ball. Uh, and teams no longer want to strike the ball, Jackie. Striking the ball from, I know I keep using this, but the Jackie Turl, shame, was sick looking at it. Get the ball, swivel onto his left and drive it 75, 80 yards minimum up to Owen Larkin, being marked by Declan Fanning and they competed for it man on man. Now it's like a short pass. Sometimes the pass you think are, God, that's a crazy pass. It's so tight. Or it's a so troll, Barry. Mm. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that's that's a different. Well, I might actually try to. I, that, that's yeah. Like, I, they were all I, at it. I, they were, they, uh, yeah, all four. Yeah, all four teams were at it again. Yeah, over you the could. Weekend, and you, I mean. To be honest, like a referee of the weekend is not going to suddenly try and stamp but, it out. But, but like, Jack, Jackie, Jackie, you, you you play basketball. How many umpires are on a basketball court at any given time? You see, that's the thing. We'd have two refs in a thirty meter like, course, yeah. and in a, in the NBA lads now they have three referees in a yeah. thirty meter court. Yeah, th three three referees in a thirty meter court, and it seems to work. And I know, look at people get, oh, why are we importing from what? But we're expecting one guy, right? Who in Barry and I don't mean this in a disparaging way, 
but invariably, it's a chap that might be in his 40s, mid 40s, by far the most part. So he's going to be 10, 15 years older than a lot of the players who are super fit, right? In the fastest field sport in the world, on a pitch that's 145 meters by 90. And we're expecting him to be able to see and spot and get every decision. Right, the ball is moving at 80 90 miles an hour, up and down, up and down. I mean, come on, like, yeah, I think I think it has to be like, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I said this before, a few sports road thing. I said, like, that's the way basketball do it, and it's such small court and everything. Two refs, like, even like if the linesman Barry could even step in and be that second ref on the pitch when the ball comes in there, half Barry, it might be some help to him. But like, you're talking about Barry before, like, even as a midfielder before Barry, when you were reffing, like, you could be there for 50, 10 minutes and the ball might even land midfield. You're going over and back and how you try to get onto a ball is you'd have to go back to your own 21 just to try and get maybe a pop pass from a corner back. Whereas now, whereas nowadays, the ball just does hardly goes past that midfield area. It has to go through there for a better quality ball inside. So as a ref now, where it was 10 years ago or even Barry, as you said, even six years ago, it was it was easier in the vertical commas to ref that middle quarter, right? Or that middle third as it's called. Whereas nowadays, it's easier to ref the full forward line, which used to be crazy town before because balls were just lumping in top of it. But nowadays, the ball going in is so measured that as a ref, I suppose, Barry, you're looking at it going, well, there's 40 or 50 yards in space. It's 1v1. I, 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 I could nearly call this. I could nearly call this from 30 yards. And if I'm wrong now, Barry, just say it. But, but when you're in that middle third, Barry, and as a ref, unless you're nearly actually in there, it's so hard to get everything right. The pull of an arm, in inverted commas, the hand pass, you know, steps, all these small steps, the in. throw ball, steps, play in the hurley. Yeah, the fit, the, the, that, actually, the, the Jackie, the of players, like as well. Like, I mean, that, I was marking Michael Finley, you know, and trying to mark him. And Michael Finley, you know, he was he was one of a kind at the time, now, like six foot four, 37 inch hurley, but able to hurl and able to move. You fast forward now to Limerick, Limerick have 10 Michael Finleys now, like <laughs> six foot four plus, able to hurl, able to move. That's why I'm saying. I do think there needs to be another body in there, Barry, even around that middle third again, to try and get some of these calls right. Because you can't. It's impossible at the moment. Mm. And I think Jackie makes a really good point there, by the way. The amount of playing the hurley now, and like playing the hurley was a big free. Wild. Like, right? But it seems to be, Asher, ah, sure, look, you could just play the hurley away now. It, no, it, I never see it being called anymore. And it's, uh, look, anyway. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it's, it's it's hard going. It's hard going being a ref there. You will get you because there's whatever about a player getting you won't get everything right. But being a ref nowadays, I think there needs to be more bodies on the field, Barry. It needs to be a second body there. Let the linesman step into his half. Of the would you be and, in and favor of a, Would you be in favor of a second referee, Barry? A senior and a junior ref, or something along those lines, or we'll take one half of the field each, or I don't know. I I, I personally wouldn't, in a sense that sometimes it's hard to get consistency from a referee from one match to the next and then suddenly you could have two referees who might have a different approach in terms of one guy in one half the field is given yes, handy, and the, and the the referees, <laughs> you know, and then suddenly you're a guy and then you're being compared not just to a guy who's sitting at home but suddenly they're comparing it to the guy at the other end of the field like in a way mm. but, but at Shane's point there there was one yesterday I think that you know if Colm had a little bit of a help like the Tony Kelly early on where Tony was really irate over a free given against him and I remember looking at it thinking my first view on it was He's right, it's free. It did look like Tony had, had fouled, I think, Mikey Butler. But when the replay was shown, it was just a genuine kind of the two of them clashed. Mikey Butler fell, jostled. And but and Colin couldn't have seen it because it had happened, you know, as the ball was traveling. Uh, and you know, the linesman might have been I actually my own wife actually said to me, Could that, you know, could the linesman someone not have told him that that's you know, because like and, and the other thing too, I suppose now is every free now is so punitive. Yeah, like it's isn't it isn't like, you know, like I remember the free I gave back in in fourteen, uh, you know that the bubbles put you know put inches wide whatever. You should uh, have made him take it again, Barry. Do you know that? Kenny <laughs> <laughs> Lack wasn't back far enough that day. They weren't back far enough. Should have made him take it again. Bubbles still bubbles still thinks it's a point actually. In fairness, like I can't. Um, but like. Back then, like, given that free, you weren't necessarily thinking that this has been in range. Like, whereas nowadays, you have no doubt that it's in range. Uh, actually, I think Shane was in some temporary match at the weekend. Was there a goal scored? Yeah, a goalie, a goalie scored a goal for Carrick's one. And uh, Seamus Kendi actually was stepping over the free. He missed the free. The goalkeeper for Carrick's one. And 
he popped out the ball. It went the whole way in. I think it bounced around the fourteen and bounced into the net, and and they and they won the game. Yes, his uh, his no, fair pop the ball. <laughs> it, it it mightn't be the biggest pitch in the world. Maybe I don't know. No, it, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be the biggest pitch in the world. But to, to still so puck the ball and they look at Bree, ball, Bree's yeah. helping him as well. Like you know, but, I know. But you're still pucking the ball 130, 140 meters, like which is mind boggling. Outrageous lads. And like oh Dermot Dier- Dier- Burns will score. If Bree's behind him. Burns will score one from the D, the opposite D. Yeah, mm. like he puck at 110 yards, Burns. Like, the funny incredible. thing about him, the funny thing about him is the long, the long, the further it out is more suits him. Like if it's closer in, he seems to struggle. He missed one, like quite close in on yeah, Saturday. I'd say, and I'd, I'd, say and, I'd say they have a zone, Rory, don't they? That Galen yeah. seems to be the 45 in, yeah, yeah. and and this was literally three yards outside it. And yeah. I'd say the, the thing is right, that's your zone. But I, I agree with you. I think the further out it is, the more accurate it is. The more the accurate more, he is, the yeah. More he can kind of bring that ball around, but yeah. 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 Uh, right, come here. We better move on to the other game yesterday before, before time runs away from yeah. us as well. Um, I do, I, 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 much like Galway, Shane, I do think Claire are going to wake up this morning and, and have those regrets. You're right. I think that first half set up, Brian Lowen went completely away from everything that we've seen them do this year. And I do wonder if maybe he's going to feel if we'd have gone from it from the start, we could be in an All-Ireland final here. Yeah, definitely, Jackie. And we were up there and like, we, we, you know, come up and they give you the changes, lads, as you know, above in the media place. And th- like your man said, um, 25 is in for 13, like, which is Shane Amori and for Ian Galvin. And I went, Jesus, there's no way he's playing corn forward here. Like, and like, what are they, like, what are they doing here? Like, I mean, what's worked so well for them in the Munster Championship? They were going man on man. They trust, they had a trust in the guy behind him, even if there was space there. Trust in Adam Hogan, trust in Rory Hayes, you know, Connor Cleary Beck. And I just couldn't believe that they went with the sweeper. And I just read a quote from Brian Lohan this morning. And the quote was, you know, we, we, we just wanted to be still in the game at half time. Which are like, you didn't play a sweeper against Limerick, like against the, the best team. And you were you were you were in the game, you were ahead in the Munster final. You should have been six points ahead. I, I, I just couldn't get I couldn't get my head around it. And and everyone around there as well. Um Joe Kenny was on was doing the radio with me, Brian Carroll was doing the radio with me yesterday as well. And we couldn't believe it. Like that, why are they going with a sweeper? They they haven't done this before. Like, why change it now? And I think that's where the frustration lies. And then you fast forward, then right, Shane Moore gets taken off at half time. It's not his fault now. You know what I mean? He 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 did his job as best as he could, but you could see clearly he wasn't comfortable with the sweeper. He he didn't know where to be all the time, cutting off space, be a link player, e.g., like 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 Decky Hannon might be for Limerick, right? And then they they change it up. They bring on Ian Galvin. They go man and man, and the, and then they outscore Kilkenny up to the goal now, which you know is mis- was a mistake with Everquill and Rory Hayes. Kilkenny or Clare outscore Kilkenny nine points to two, going man to man. And I think Jackie, that's 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 the crux of it there. Like you know, um, they just go with this sweeper. We 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 couldn't understand it. Um, when they went man on man, it worked so well. And I just think, as you said, they're waking up this morning going, or maybe I don't know, I don't know. Like, it's easy for us to talk here. I I think maybe Jackie, the reason is. Maybe Conor Cleary is not 100%, right? And that was evident one of the balls came down the first half. Normally, Conor Cleary is going up. He's snapping that ball. He, he actually kind of half tapped it down. And TJ gets a shot off. Unbelievable save by Quilligan. And maybe they felt, we need someone else back there. But, like, if they were playing the sweeper, why not get Shane Amore to mark and get John Conlon to do the sweeper? Which he, like, he was, you know, he's unbelievable at reading space and giving quality ball. All those things being said, I, I just feel that they, they, it could be a regret that they'll have. Because, as I said, they dominated that first 15, 17 minutes of the second half. Nine points to two. Could Kenny get the goal from a mistake they made? At that point, Jackie, Clare have actually taken the lead, 19-18. You know, Clare get a couple of scores. Shane O'Donnell, unreal goal. But, lads, while we're saying the mistakes Clare made, the way Kilkenny Kenny reacted to Shane O'Donnell's goal, it just, I don't know, can you can it instill this in a county or in a team or in a group? Brian Cody has stepped away. But even just someone said it to me last, yesterday as well, they said, Maybe these lads, regardless of who's over them, they just have a kind of spirit. I said the created. exact same thing in a text yeah. last night. Sorry, Shane. Go yeah. On. yeah. And I'm just going, maybe they just have it in them. Like, and maybe regardless of who's over them, you're not ever going to get out and soft at these boys. Because they've ever. just, from years of being, I've been from Kilkenny, I've, I've never gone away. They're just an unbelievable group. And what the point I'm trying to make is, Shane O'Donnell gets the goal. What a goal. Next three points, Kilkenny. And I think that just, it cancels out the goal. Straight away when they get the point, it's a two-point goal. They get the next point, it's a one-point goal. They get the next point, now the goal is nullified. And it's just the way they finish the game. 
Um, it, it, it was unreal. Like, it, it just like as I said, nine two to Clare in 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 that quarter, and in the final quarter, then the Kenny win at eight four. They just drove on. They never give up. Obviously, Owen Cody, as Barry said at the, at the outset, was outstanding. Uh, outstanding. TJ was his work rate was unreal. Hannah Ford, his work rate was back to you know glory days for him when he was at his pump. Mullen being on the pitch two points from play and they just had their heroes all over the field really and you know what Jackie it was the old dogs that came in off the bench by I don't know how many all the medals and all-stars they had between them but I tell you what Killian Buckley Barrick Walsh with a point he Kenny got a point Wally came on and Richie Hogan winning freeze you know and, and, and Derek Ling made a great point he said I oh, wouldn't be bringing these lads on because just because of what they've done before yeah. I'm bringing these lads on because of what they're doing in training now and so in, in a nutshell, Jackie, yeah, I think Clare are waking up with regrets. I think Kilkenny, and we might touch on it maybe before we finish up, the way they're set for the final, are going into it in a great place. I actually genuinely thought Clare were going to do it yesterday, but look, there you go. Yeah. Right enough, Kilkenny. Jesus, why? Sure, listen, we do it at our peril, don't we? And I listen, yeah. I do think Shane is right there, Barry, though. It's, it's actually that whoever about, I do think Derek Ling has has put a different stamp on this team and I, I definitely think they're moving in a, in a new direction with him as well. But it, it is still the old dog for the, the same road in the way that they've done it. And a lot of it was summed up to, I was listening to Paul Murphy uh, speaking before the game and he said, I actually don't think I ever lost a semi-final. But I loved that he had to think about it and he knew well he'd never lost a semi-final. He said, I lost a few quarterfinals, I lost a few All-Ireland finals, but we don't really lose semi-finals in Kilkenny. And I thought, there you go. That's the winning mentality. And that's... Yeah, I think, group. Jackie, someone mentioned last night that it was a 29 semi-finals in whatever, and they've lost, I think, six of them, which six. is like an incredible yeah. stat. Mm-hmm. But the other thing too is that, going back to, to Shane's earlier point, like, if Derek and his sideline crew could have uh, wanted a team to play the way they wanted to play, it was the way that Clare set up in the first half. I'd say Kilkenny couldn't believe, like I couldn't believe watching it. The like, hurling is hard enough against Kilkenny anyway, but like when you're going with a sweeper and they were going then short and like Kilkenny were physically up for it and Paddy Deegan made a great block at one stage and there, there was a psychological turnaround then at one stage. It was a point, I think, I think Owen Cody got a point early on from the short puck out and it was just, you were just playing into their into their hands in a way, like, and I'm sure, you know, and then it goes back to almost Galway earlier on, you know, if you want to be in the game until half time, is that, as Brian did say, and Shane mentioned that quote, I read that quote myself this morning, does that, could you imagine Kilkenny saying that? No. It just wouldn't happen, like, so like, does that reflect, and, and Claire won, they won, only won one All-Ireland in the last, you know, 25 years thereabouts, does it reflect a, a mindset or is a cultural thing too in terms of, we don't expect to win here. Could Kenny expect to win? Could Kenny expect mm-hmm. to win the final? You know, I was at the Leinster final and with the family and the final whistle went and beating traffic and so on. We left, but we met with a few Kilkenny lads walking out Jones's Road and I was chatting to them and I said, lads, you've won too much. And they kind of looked at me and were chatting away. I said, why did you say that? Well, I said, you have to win in a match there in the last minute and you're beating the traffic to go home. There's a cup being presented. Would you not stay for the cup? Like and they kind of smiled and said, "Ah, yeah, but like we're kind of used to winning matches, you know." I anyway, it wasn't a it wasn't a cockiness, but can well imagine any or county winning a match in the last minute like they did? You wouldn't. You'd still be in the stadium, and five hours later, would be in the stadium still, like no pitch invasion. The, we just think that Kilkenny produced these like you know once in a lifetime players, and you know you have those like twenty years ago, ten years ago, and like you know you think that when Henry is gone, who replaces him, and then TJ steps up. And now when right, TJ is in the towards his career, like Owen Cody and Adrian Mullen are, you know, Hugh Lawler is a phenomenal defender. Uh, obviously, Owen Murphy is one of the greatest goalkeepers of all time, if not the greatest. And you just know the conveyor belt. Uh, and it's, again, it's, it's almost like a cultural thing in a way. I mean, I mentioned about the fact that there's no way Kenny go out to stay in the game until halftime. That, that, that would just be anathema to them. Like, there's no way. A manager in Kenny who come out with that kind of, Attitude in a way wouldn't be long in the job. Like it's we'll be we'll be in the game until the final whistle, oh, and beyond the final whistle if if, if necessary. Like we're there till the very very end. Uh, but the, yeah, I can't under, underestimate to the skill levels. Like Owen Cody to play yesterday, I thought was one for the ages. Like he was just his skill, his touch, his balance, his power, everything. Like you just knew when he turned to shoot, that was it. Like he made the game look, he made it look easy. You know, yeah. it's a big. 
find this tribute to him is he makes, he makes it look like he's playing, he's marking like really good defenders, like, and he's just shrugging them off. And he's, uh, you know, I think Adrian Mullen's a huge player as well. Like, he was a massive addition back to them. Like, he's physically in massive shape and he can he's great hurler. Like, and you know, I, I, you know, Sean Finn, if Declan Hannon and, and Sean Finn don't play, which I think is probably highly well, Sean Finn won't play, and Declan Hannon, we don't know. Uh, you know, and Kilkenny are definitely better than they were last year, and it was a tight game last year. So, obviously, Limerick will be favourites. You won't be going for four in a row without being favourites, but uh, it's set up perfectly. Lose. It's set up perfectly. I mean, they don't lose. They don't yeah. lose too many finals back to back. They don't. Yeah. If ever, if ever, actually, I'm not sure. I I think you're right, Rory. I think it's set up perfectly, and the sense that I get from talking to every single person about this is exactly as Shane outlined there. Kilkenny are better set up this year to have a go at Limerick, big time. And I, I'm going to admit something now, Jackie, which I thought I'd never ever say, and it's a good job, my father. Don't say it. Up. Don't say it. I like Kilkenny. <laughs> I knew I you were going to say it. I'm starting to like Kilkenny. I don't know why. It's like a kind of a, it's like a, an illness or something, right? <laughs> what? They are just, I look, you're just watching them and you're going, is there any way that you, you could bottle that and just, you know, export it down to other counties? I mean, I often wonder, like, I don't want to name any names, but there's a couple of players, we'll say, even in a Cork context. And I often wonder, Jesus, if he was from Kilkenny, what kind of a player would he be like? Because we know he has all the skills. They are just, and Barry mentioned there, their ability to get little flicks in, little hooks, little blocks. Their use at Hurley is just, it, it just masterful. And then you marry that up with just this indomitable spirit. And again, to go back to Shane's earlier point, which I think is very, very key here. There was a sense for an awful long time that Brian Cody had sort of templated this sort of famous Kilkenny spirit and that it was something that only he instituted and then with that when he would go, that this would go. But like, the reality is this probably existed even going back to when Brian Cody was playing himself when they went up into an All-Ireland final in 82, 83 against a much more vaunted Cork team where Jimmy Barry was captain and Cody... And, and and Dick O'Hara and all that crew hurled them off the field, you know? Like, there's just something about them. They're incredible. I think they will relish this opportunity. But on the flip side of it, I think from a Limerick perspective, the respect that Limerick will have for Kilkenny and the challenge that they pose just makes this final so mouth-watering. Oh, oh, listen, blockbuster, like... I. It'll be is the word is the word you're looking for, Rory, is admire Kilkenny, not like them. I'm sure. Yeah. I I I I, 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 I hate I, I, but Barry, I hate to have to admit any of those words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know? tell you between you, you, you now you can't go back home now for all <laughs> yeah. That's it. Well, between him and Don Log last night told me that he thinks Henry Shefflin is a great man and he's full of admiration for him. And I said, My God, if I thought we were gonna get to this place after watching E over the last number of years, but <laughs> I think, though, Shane, it's just a sense of us watching Kilkenny that for them to come back to the top table and really push Limerick, maybe it's because of the narrative of Kilkenny being the greatest of all time and Limerick potentially getting there. Maybe that's what adds to the to the blockbuster atmosphere of it. But it does feel like this could be the final for the ages. Could be. Could be a great final. Like, and if anyone wants to stop them doing four in a row, it's obviously the team that did it most recently. Um, uh, like, you know, in, in Derek, like we spoke about Brian Cody, he stepped away. Derek Ling is he was a great man to get in, you know. Um, I think play massive respect from the players. And then you add in the likes of Michael Rice and Peter Barry, who would have huge respect for that from that group of players as well. Yeah. And you get Shane, those guys Shane, in like Shane, sorry to interrupt. Can I ask you a question? When is the last time Kilkenny flopped on the big day or oh. didn't play well, you know? So we are very or Rory or you're, you're, you're talking to the one person now here who's been played against them <laughs> on the big day a good bit between <laughs> league finals and all that. And I never we never had a bad game against them. Whether they they brought out the best in us and we brought out the best in them, but they seem. But like as you said already, it's it's just it's just a given. Like there's not a big deal made about it when you have an outstanding game and all in a final for Kenya. It's just like well, you should have. That's what, you <laughs> yeah. that's what that's what yeah. before you did. Like that's what generations yeah. before you did. That's what generations after you will do. You're just wearing the jersey now. You do your best for it. You give it to someone else, and and they'll do the same thing. And Owen Cody summed it up in his interview. He said, he "Said Jesus Christ, Leslie." I mean, yeah. uh, like, I mean, we have to be going well to keep Killian Buckley and Walter Welch and Paul yeah. Welch and these guys off the team. Like, 
I mean, we're, we're, there's younger lads here, but we, if we know if we're not doing it, they're going to be on and we're going to be off. And I think that's what it is like, you know, they just, I think they maximise as well. They, they, they get the max out of themselves on the big days. Whether they, they don't get as nervous because of the culture, because of what's gone before, because of their mothers or fathers or grandmothers or grandfathers at home saying, you go out now in your hurl and that's what you do, because that's what's been done here always. And I maybe maybe that's just in as well to say, yeah, I will. There's no like, yeah, but maybe I need to see be a sports psychologist. Maybe I need to have the right boots. And she's like, as I remember, you know, I remember it was absolutely pissing rain one year in all in the final. And we were so worried about the boots we were going to wear and all this. And I looked over at Tommy Walsh and JJ and they were wearing moldies. And I went, the boots aren't concerning these boys today. I said, they're just out here to hurry. And I think that's, that's what it is, right? And I like, you know, I'm sure that goes on. I don't know, does it go on in every county? I don't think it does. I just think they don't overthink it. They go out in the hurl. And let me just give you a few stats from this time last year before we finish up, right? Why are they so set up? I think they're, in, they're probably in a, a better group now. Now, Limerick will, obviously, they'll bring it as well, without doubt, even without their leaders in the backs with Sean Finn and Decky, maybe. In the, in the final quarter last year, they both took nine shots and they both got six scores. Now, usually Limerick dominate the final quarter in these big games, right? But they both had nine shots and six scores in the final quarter, the honor and final last year. They, their, their, their percentage, right, of, of shooting, right, Kilkenny's was 72%, Limerick's was 71%. They were both shooting the lights out with efficiency, okay? From turnovers, Kilkenny scored 1-8, Limerick scored 11 points. Like, they're, they were so well-matched last year, and I think they're going to be so, so well-matched this year. There'll be nothing in it. Like, at the end of the day, it was 226 to 131. There's only two points in it. But I think where Kilkenny will, will go after it now this year, and we'll have to make big improvements, is... They only won 14 of the 32 puckouts where they went long. And I'd say, look, the way, look at the way Limerick dominated against Galway. I'd say Derek Ling and the group are going to go, we need to be winning more, whether it's breaking ball or whatever in the long puckouts. Because they're matching them everywhere else, lads. Work rate, they're matching them from shooting efficiency, and they're, match, they're staying with them to the very, very end. So I just think, lads, as you said, lads, it makes it for a, a, an absolutely cracking final, hopefully, in a couple of weeks' time. No, and Rory, just one last thing, Jackie. I, I think as well, though, I think it's a bit like going back to 2009 and 10, like Tipperary's team with Shane so close in 2009 and lost the final and you bottled that hurt. And then the following year, Kilkenny, a bit like Limerick now, you know, Henry was obviously made off injured. John Tennyson, you know, wasn't fully, wasn't fit like. Um, and now you Sean Finn and Decky Hannon. I, I just think it's eight years since Kenny won All Ireland, which is, you know, a famine by their standards. And they lost last year's final. Like Limerick will have to be, I think, nine out of ten, because you just know Kilkenny are going to be eight and a half, nine. Yeah. And you know, I I would give Kilkenny a great shot. I just think that, you know, Shane knows himself. You lose a final, like a nine, ten, eleven. Those Kilkenny Tipperary great games, like Kilkenny Kilkenny won in nine. Might be the better team that day, but they got across the line. Tip one and ten, uh, maybe not, not even ten as well as I had a nine, but they won the game and eleven. Then K- Kenny came back with the hurt, and you know it is difficult to see. That sounds crazy in a way. Team that's been so good like Limerick, I just find it difficult to see Kenny not giving it everything as we know they will, and the skill levels and the hunger. Uh, you know, I give them a great, great shot. Yeah. Lads, it's going to be fascinating. Can't wait uh, for it in two weeks' time. Come here, before we finish up, Shane, just a quick word. A quick on word the on the come And I think the biggest performance of the weekend is Tipperary potentially looking at getting into an All-Ireland All final Ireland. if they can come past Waterford. For both of those counties, I think it's an enormous opportunity that one of them can play in an All-Ireland final. So things must be pretty happy in Tip. Ah, look, they are. They're in a great place, Jackie. They're doing, like, with the management they have, the players they have, like... You say one player that uh, everyone knows from down from down through the years would have been Mary Ryan, like right, and you caught the Vander as well. She's still on the team, but Mary would have been a stalwart, like she's there a long, long time. But now Mary's finding it hard to make the team, and I suppose that's a sign of the progress maybe Tiff have made, you know, uh, under Dennis Kelly and his management team. Maybe Mary's finding it hard to get a team. She came on the other day, she did really well. But look, Jackie, it was it was absolutely brilliant. They they, they topped the group, okay? They're 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 going toe to toe with the big guns now. Went down to Nolan Park, through with Kilkenny. That was a big big result for them. If they lost that day, it would have been demoralising for the group. They topped the group. They still had to play a quarter final, and that might have knocked a little bit back out of them after topping the group. I, I don't get this rule. You top a group and you still have to play a quarter final. That's another debate for another day with the Camogie Association, I think. Um, but they came out. They they had Antrim. You know, they they knew they had to get a job done. Norby Stark got the job done. 
let's be honest, Jackie, they got Watford in the semi final, which the other like like they would have wanted. They would have wanted that drop. Let's let's be totally honest. Yeah. They're in the semi final now. They're in a great place. I think it'll be a great atmosphere in Nolan Park there in a couple of weeks' time with the, with the double header. Um, Cork and Galway will, I'm sure, knock lumps out of each other. But you know, I think it's absolutely brilliant for Camogie that you're going to have Tip or Watford in an All Ireland Camogie final. There'll be a great buzz around here um, as well. My 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 own wife actually has a, an All Ireland Camogie medal. She was winning All Ireland before I I I I was even playing with Tip. So she's 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 buzzing as well with her club as well. And you know, they all they all know these girls as well. You know, it's 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 a fairly tight knit community in the Camogie. So look, I think a great couple of weeks, great a couple of uh, weeks to build up for the, the Tip Camogie girls. And I think they're in a great place now to get get back to an All Ireland final. Mm. Similarly for Cork Rory I think yeah. just that performance against Kilkenny to be able to go and beat the All-Ireland champions like that in the fashion that they did uh, it does set it up well they just know now that they've got Galway in a semi-final which for them I think is probably the one draw maybe they didn't want I, I'd give them a really good chance though I don't think they'll have anything to really fear I mean they played outstanding yesterday they obviously felt that they might have had the legs on Kilkenny so mm -hmm. they looked to run the ball quite a lot and they got huge um, they got huge joy from that they probably should have scored an, an, an extra couple of goals there was definitely one penalty that was a non-awarding of the penalty it was actually quite interesting I think pro possibly what happened in that situation was I think the referee probably saw the replay on the big screen. And I think that might have actually influenced him not giving that free that Kilkenny should have gotten, which was basically the last puck of the game to take the game into uh, into into extra time. Because I'd say it would have been big trouble for him had Kilkenny managed to pull a result out of the bag, given the fact that, look, it was as blatant a penalty as you're going to see. Now, again, look, I suppose it comes back to his particular line of sight. And I'd say that was probably, the, probably comes back to the conversation we had earlier about potentially two referees. But I think they're in a really good place. I mean, when you're bringing the likes of Ashing Thompson in off the bench, Trina Mackey is playing some of the best hurling I've seen her playing for an awful long time. They've got a really good spread of scores, lots of pace, you know. So I think they'll give Galway plenty of it in that semi final. Should be a very, very close game. And um, in fairness, look, I think they were better valued in the one point victory yesterday, suggests. So I think, look, Matthew Toomey and his. Uh, and his backroom team will 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 relish the challenge of taking on Galway in the semi final. Should make for a good game. Yeah, I think so. Couldn't agree more. And Barry, I do think just having them in Croke Park with full houses for them to be played. Like, look, I was just looking at the crowds yesterday and it was brilliant to see the amount of people that were in early because particularly anybody that went to watch Cork Kilkenny yesterday, it was a good contest. And I think for people getting the chance to see them playing them in Croke Park was a great weekend for Camogie. And they, they badly needed the publicity given everything that's going on with the protests and all of that. Absolutely. And the skill level, you know, towards yeah. the end of the game, like the, the skill level, some of the... I think one of the one of the penalties that maybe the Cork didn't get as such, but there was a, a move down the down the wing and then a, a cross field pass and like there was just sublime catching and sublime uh, levels of skill like so yeah absolutely and you know the winners of Cork Galway will go in as very hot favourites in the final but uh, for, as a chance for Tipperary and Ward to get to the Ireland final and get that experience and you know on the on the big day and can happen like so it's all set up now nicely for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, look, looking forward to that as well. Lads, we'll have to leave it there, but uh, thoroughly enjoyed it and really just cannot wait for these matches over the next couple of weeks. Shane, Barry, thanks a million for being with us. And myself and Rory will be back on Thursday to look ahead to the All-Ireland Football semi-finals. The big matches just keep coming. Talk to you soon. by winning the last two matches on the road and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it! He hits it!